G'day guys, Nick here again from CPAP Reviews. Thanks for tuning in to part two of our three part series on the ResMed AirSense 10 machine. Uh, part one, we looked at basic setup. Part two, we're just gonna look at the, the patient menu. Um, I'm gonna take you through it nice step by step so you understand what the different menu options are, how to change them, and that way you're gonna get the best out of your machine. Uh, so without further ado, let's have a look at it. It's got a nice little screen, this front, like forward facing screen. Uh, it's split in two. On the front here, we've also got a little home button and we've also got our little click wheel. Okay, most of the time you're gonna be using this click wheel to change the menu. So you can rotate this uh, clockwise and anti-clockwise and you can see as I do, it sort of highlights different uh, menu options. Uh, on the front screen, we have my options and also sleep report. Let's look into my options first. So all we do is highlight it and then with this click wheel, we can also press it in. So just click it in and release. That's gonna open up the My Options menu. And you can see that there's a whole bunch of different things here. Um, and we're just gonna go through each one and just talk about them um, and show you how to change them. So the first one there you'll see is Ramp Time. If you're using an auto, auto set machine, just disregard that. You don't have to know anything about it. If you're using a fixed pressure machine, so that's, you know, you're set to a set rate of pressure. Might be 10, might be 11. Uh, that's if you're using like a AirSense 10 Elite, not the auto set. Um, you might want to, you, I recommend that you run it in ramp time auto, but if you don't want to run it at auto, um, you can run it as a set time. And to do that, you just click it and you can just rotate the dial and choose your set time uh, for the ramp to basically start at a low pressure and gradually build up over this set time. But if you leave it as auto, the machine will basically determine when you fall asleep and then it will adjust the pressure up to your set pressure. Um, the next one down is says climate CTRL or climate control. So this is referring to now the, the heated tube here and at the back and the uh, humidifier. So what those two um, what those two settings are. When it's set to auto, basically the machine will monitor the ambient humidity around in the room, and then it will basically automatically adjust the temperature of the tube and the uh, the heater plate on the um, humidification chamber in order to just deliver optimal humidification. Um, you can, if you want to, change this uh, to manual. So all I did then was, I'll just quickly show you, all you do is you click it, it opens up, and then you rotate the dial down to manual and click again and change it to manual. This now gives you um, this tube temperature and humidity level here. So the tube temperature, if we click that in, um, we, you can see we can change the temperature of the tubing. If you're in winter time and you're in Melbourne like we are, you, know, you want that tube temperature really hot. Like 30 degrees sounds really hot, but it's not like the, the air is going to be 30 degrees. It just means that the temperature itself of the tubing is going to get to that sort of point. Um, and like a, a nice warm tubing means that the actual humidif humidified air is going to stay humidified. It's going to stay as vapor. Um, and also the, the, the air is going to be a bit warmer for you, which is uh, sort of what you want in winter time. Otherwise, you'll find it very, very cold on your nose or on your face. And then you've got the humidity level. So one down from tube 10, you've got humidity level. And that's the level of moisture that's going to be in the air. So the level of humidification, the amount of vapor, water vapor. So that can go between off, which is nothing. So the heater plate's not going to go. As we're increasing this number, we're increasing the heat of the heater plate. So the, hot, the, the higher we go up in this number, the hotter that heater plate gets, the more humidification it creates, okay? So just, the, you know, how to operate that is, if you just test it out, if you're dry in the throat of the morning, you might need some more humidification, okay? So just go up by one, see how you go the next night, and so on, keep going up. If you're getting like a lot of moisture, too much condensation or anything like that, you might find that you want to bring it down a little bit, okay? But generally, humidity aids in alleviating congestion as well. It tends to open up the airways. Um, so if you're you know, getting a bit congested of a night time in terms of a bit sniffly, a bit stuffy, you might want to try uh, increasing that humidify, humidification level up because it will tend to alleviate that congestion, all right? Something to think about there, okay? So let's just put it at four for now anyway. Um, so I'm going to change that back from control, uh, climate control manual. I'm going to change it back to automatic because I think uh, we'll just leave it for automatic at the moment. Um, uh, pressure relief. Um, this is what they call EPR. So if we just leave that on, I'll show you that in a sec. But basically, um, pressure relief as you exhale, the machine is going to 
reduce the pressure that it's delivering. So you breathe in, you get full pressure. As you exhale, the machine reduces the pressure. The result of this makes it easier to breathe against the pressure. So it makes using the therapy easier because you're not breathing out against air, like a lot of air coming in, all right? Some people love this. Some people find that it throws their breathing off a little bit. Experiment with it. I'll show you how to experiment with it in a minute, but I recommend you should have pressure relief on because it is a very handy feature. Smart start, have that on, okay? We can't turn it off, but have it on. It just means that you can put your mask on, start breathing. The machine will start up automatically. It's good. You don't have to go like looking around for buttons to try and turn it on. You can just hop into bed. Who cares where your machine is? You just start breathing, it'll turn on, get up to go to the bathroom, you can take it off and it'll go off as well. Or if you take your mask off in the night without knowing, it'll also stop the machine instead of you know hissing and going, blowing around. Uh, next one down is the mask. Okay, so we can set um, the mask, what mask we're using. You have the options of pillows, which is your nasal pillows, it's your nostril, full face, or nasal mask. So just you know choose whatever mask you got there, click that. Um, run mask fit. All right, so what we what you want to do with that is, if you put your mask on over night time, um, just before you go to bed, so you put your mask on, go into this and click run mask fit, and what's going to happen is the machine is going to check um, and make sure, so it's going to start, so it's already given us a big red face there because there's no there's no mask connected to it, all right, but you run that, um, you run that mask fit, it'll make sure that your mask is correctly fitted, all right. You know, in terms of the amount of tension you've got, so that way when you fall asleep, you know that your mask is fitted well and that it's going to be nice and safe and secure throughout the night. You're not going to get heaps of mask leaks and stuff like that. So run that mask fit before every night and um, you're going to be doing well. Run warm up. What that does is, um, if you run this warm up, it means it's going to heat the heater plate before you go to bed for about 30 minutes so that when you actually start to use the machine, um, it's going to be nice and ready to deliver humidification instantly. If you don't run, run the warm up, it means that when you hop into bed and start using the machine, uh, it's going to take you know a bit of time before that water actually heats up to start pr pr providing humidification, and by that time you might have already dried out. Okay, so run the warm up, run the mask fit, airplane mode. Um, run this obviously if you're going on a plane. Um, I'm pretty sure airplane mode. Uh, also makes them uh, more user friendly with batteries. So I think it cuts out power also to the heated tube and the humidifier plate, as well as um, I think it probably does something to the wireless signal too. All right, but um, run airplane mode, obviously, if you're using with batteries or if you're on a plane and then you've got it about, which tells you a little bit about your machine. Um, so we'll scroll all the way back up to the top here to home, click the button. So that's my options done. Pretty straightforward, it made that nice and easy. Now let's go down to your sleep report. So just rotate the dial down, hit sleep report, click it in. Uh, so this is going to tell you your basically your sleep report. Um, you know how you're doing with your actual therapy. All right. Um, so basically, what we've got here, I'll just take you through it. Uh, usage hours. Um, so this is sort of last night's sleep report, if you will. Okay. So usage hours, how many hours you used it for. Events per hour, that's your apnea, hypopnea index. So how many apneas, hypopneas, whatever you had. So about how many bad breathing events per hour you had. Try and get that under five if you can. Uh, your mask seal and your humidifier, it's either going to give you a nice, uh, you know, green face, which means good, or it's going to give you a, you know, an angry red face, which means bad. So you kind of want to get those uh, green if you can. Uh, and then it's also going to give you options to um, change like your period there. So, you know, if you want, I generally do a week. I reckon a week or a month's really good. So your period, it's going to give you the days you use. It's going to average all these things out, okay, over the actual month. All right, and let's have a look what we got. So it's going to, um, how many days you used it in the week? How many days over four hours you used it? So how many like nights you use your machine over four hours per night? the average usage per hours over those seven days, the used hours, so the total amount of hours you used it for, the pressure, so the pressure, um, they will give you, I think they'll probably give you, yeah, so that pressure there, they'll give you as like a 90th percentile pressure, I imagine, so that means that 90% of the night, the pressure was below whatever that value is, uh, it will give you the leak, as in litres per minute, so generally, you know, the leak rates, try and get them under 50 if you can. If you've got a beard or something like that, you might not be able to do that. But if you could try and get that under 50 litres per minute, you're doing not too bad. Yeah, you know, I've got my index again. So based, averaged out over seven days, you know, how many 
um, events per hour you had, try and get it under less than five. If you're creeping up over five, you might need to adjust some settings a bit, especially if you're over 10. Your total apnea index, so how many apneas you had, um, and then you've got central apnea index. So if you're having heaps of central apneas, you might need to look at getting yourself a BiPAP machine. Um, just speak to your healthcare professional about that, okay? So that's your sleep report. Um, pretty straightforward, pretty handy just to be able to see that on the screen though. So that's your patient settings. How easy is that, huh? Um, I hope you enjoyed part two of this series. Um, if you want to delve a little bit deeper and get a little bit more advanced in the, in the therapy, uh, let's head over to part three and you can check out the clinical menu, which is um, uh, the secret menu behind your patient menu. All right. So uh, yeah, if you can be bothered, check that out. Thanks for watching the video as always. We love having your support. So cheers for that. Okay, bye.